Hi, Betty Matthews from the Stratford and District Chamber of Commerce. And we had a great discussion at the Arden Park with the, the candidates for the Perth Wellington federal election. Great debate, great discussion. And that's the terrific thing about debates is that it's, it's a good way of opening lines of discussion and presenting ideas. And we wanted to continue that with the candidates of Perth Wellington and uh, Kevin Kruska, which from the NDP joining us, Kevin, good to see you again. Good to see you, Eddie. Thanks for having me. I know you've got a hectic schedule, so we'll uh, we'll get to the, those questions that we're unable to get to uh, last week. And and I, I there's a few that that I thought I'm glad they presented these afterwards because I wanted to address these questions about the environment, national pharmacare program, the national debt, and uh, the vaccine program. And and one thing that a lot of people may not be aware of is that the city of Stratford declared a climate emergency in February of 2020. Now now if elected. What would your government do to eliminate the extraction of fossil fuels and the burning of fossil fuels in this country down the road? Yeah, I mean, immediately the first thing that we will do is, is um, stop fossil fuel subsidies. Um, we need to make it harder to continue working in that realm and make it easier to be moving on to um, a greener technology. So we start off with ending fossil fuel subsidies. Um, so we can uh, start to achieve our goal. We want to reduce emissions uh, down below uh, to 50% of what they were at the 05 level by uh, 2030. We want to get to net zero electricity by 2040. And, and this is a big one because it does a couple of things. We want to retrofit all of our buildings by 2050. Uh, in Canada, we think about the big polluters and we want to make sure that they're not polluting and all of those emissions. Uh, but what we really want to do is um, in this country, because of the extreme uh, climate changes we have, uh, our houses, our buildings, farm outbuildings uh, leak. They're leaky. We are leaking emissions. So the retrofit does a couple of things. It, it, we start to seal that up, so we reduce emissions very quickly, but it, it creates jobs. Uh, so baked right into the NDP platform is, is job creation in the green industry that then also helps us reduce our emissions. So that's the plan. I mean, specifically to fossil fuels, we're going to reduce those subsidies and we're going to put that money then into promoting the um, manufacturing of electric vehicles here in Canada. Our incentives are based around bringing the manufacturing to Canada. So there's incentives around electric vehicles, but they need to be manufactured here in Canada. So all of that is sort of part and parcel, building the economy as we're reducing emissions and getting off of fossil fuels. I think a lot of people would like to get uh, you know, an electric vehicle, it's just the cost factor right now. Yeah. Would, do you see any incentives that would, that would help? Yeah, there's incentives out? in the platforms. I don't have the exact numbers in front of me. There's incentives for the manufacturing, which brings those costs down, but then there's incentives uh, for the buyers to around uh, uh, what we're calling EVs or, you know, electronic vehicles mm -hmm. or zero emission vehicles. Mm -hmm. We hear a lot about uh, ZEVs. Um, so there's incentives uh, for working class Canadians to, uh, make them affordable. And then we also see that these uh, these companies know that this is the wave of the future. So we're seeing a lot of, uh, you know, F Ford, for example, is sending out an entire fleet of electric vehicles. So as, as that market starts to change, those prices are going to be coming down. Not everyone can afford, yeah. you know, an X model Tesla for $120,000. It's not, you know, that's not, vi that's not viable for me. I need, you know, a vehicle that's priced in my price range, which is you know, thirty to $40,000. You know, that would be a good tagline. Remember many years ago, a chicken in every pod, you could, a Tesla in every driveway now. <laughs> Wouldn't that be <laughs> lovely? Uh, but <laughs> yeah, no, it, is, you know? it is a big focus for us, uh, definitely. Yeah. Hey, and when we're talking about dollars and, and cents and that, yeah, mm -hmm. we're going to have to pay, you know, this has been a challenging 18 or so months, and we are going to have to pay things back, pay the piper yeah. in that no matter what government leads us after September 20th, how, how much debt can this country safely take on before we create a problem that's too large for future generations to absorb? Yeah, I mean, we've been there for a while uh, though. And we know that Eddie, like we've seen it jump a lot quite recently. We were already heading, you know, even under Harper, the debt jumped. Uh, to levels that were sort of unfathomable to us at the time. And now we're here. Uh, we need to start scaling that back, but we also need to bridge from where we are. There are people who are still not working. There are industries that are still not up and running. You know, I'm, I'm from the arts and we are, you know, at best, 
50% capacity. Uh, and, you know, we're heading out of the summer. So all of these great outdoor festivals and outdoor shows that we were able to sort of manifest through this, uh, it doesn't work anymore as it gets colder and moving inside is still not an option. Uh, so we need to bridge from here to there. So yeah, we're going to need to be spending money still until we get completely up and running. The interesting thing about the NDP is often the knock is there's a lot of great policy that takes care of a lot of people, but it's so expensive. How do you pay for it? The parliamentary budget office just did all of the costing on all of the major party platforms. We are the most cost effective uh, platform. Uh, people find that surprising, but with the tax reform, reforms that we're that we're uh, proposing, uh, we will generate 166 billion dollars over five years. Now, our investment is about 214 billion over five years, so that's just 48 billion dollars over five years in cost. Uh, that's still a lot, but uh, when we start to look at it, so in 2021-22 for us, it's projected to be a 145 billion dollar deficit because we really we want to build universal pharmacare, we want to really start that green infrastructure, retrofitting homes, all of that. So it's that's high. That's 145 billion, but right. The very next year, down to 53 billion, and then down to 34 billion by 2025. So if we look at, at the way that number is moving, uh, we see that we're already on track to start sort of contracting that spending once we sort of implement these programs and, and build the new green economy. Now, does that come into effect if, if the ducks are, are lined up in a row? Because part of it, too, is is making the rich pay their fair share is yeah. that's what uh, your leader has said. So is that including that sort of thing? Yeah, that's the thing. That's where uh, for us, that's where the revenue comes from. Right? And it's a legitimate revenue stream. And I know a lot of people go, well, that's not possible. But it is. It's, it's going to take a lot of work. It's going to take tax reform. And there's going to be a lot of crying foul from the ultra wealthy. But we know that a good number of the ultra wealthy have not been paying their fair share. We can we can look to the Panama Papers and we know that money was moved offshore and, and hidden from the Canadian government. We, we, we have all of that information. So we know that that's happening. So we want to close those tax loopholes. Anyone making over $10 million, there's, there's a 1% tax on anything over $10 million. That's not excessive. At capital gains, we want to move up to 75%. Uh, we want to... Uh, add luxury taxes, 20% luxury tax on things like, like uh, all of your yachts and uh, jet planes, Eddie, you're going to have to pay 20% uh, on that. I figured that would eventually happen. <laughs> and also a foreign buyer's tax and a speculation yeah. tax. So all of these things will help the housing market, as well as sort of create revenue for this country in a way that does not affect working Canadians. Working Canadians under the NDP's plan, our taxes will not change. So we are going to try to make life more affordable for working Canadians and just, just make the ultra wealthy and corporations pay their fair share. We're just asking for them to pay their fair share. We're, we're not going after them. We're not attacking them with excessive taxes. Moving, you know, moving the top marginal tax rate up three points uh, is not, like, we're just moving back to sort of early 2000 levels. Um, so it's not excessive and it's not a, a, a malicious attack. It's we're saying you should also pay your fair share. Yeah, no. Uh, and, and folks, if you have any questions too, or any, any concerns, just go to Kevin's website and get and ask any questions. They're very open about all this sort of stuff too. And I'll ask you one last question because I know you've got a busy schedule. We've been hearing, especially this week about the vaccine mandate and, and some of the protests that we've seen in front of hospitals for crying out loud. This is an issue that's going to divide an awful lot of people in this country. But for those people that, that have medical issues and valid medical exemptions, what will your government do to keep all Canadians safe, including those with the compromised immune issues? Yeah, well, that's, that's what this is about for us, is taking care of, of all of our neighbors uh, and, and fellow Canadians who, who can't. Like we're proposing that everyone who can be vaccinated should be vaccinated so we can take care of the ones who can't be vaccinated. Uh, the, the children and the people with legitimate medical exemptions, we, we know that they cannot be vaccinated. We understand that, we're, we're not unreasonable, but we're saying to protect them, we need to be vaccinated. Just as we were vaccinating children for rubella and polio so they would protect the rest of us, it's now our turn to protect the children. That's what we believe. Now. Um, 
we have control over federal employees to a certain extent. So we say, if you're a federal employee, yes, you need to be you need to be vaccinated. We feel that that's a proper and fair and a good precedent to set for all Canadians. But but we are saying we want Canadians to be vaccinated, ones who can be vaccinated, so we can take care of those who can't. That's what it's about helping out our neighbors to make sure we all get through this and, and not allow this virus to continue to mutate and get a bit smarter than what our science is at right now. We need to get on this now. And that's what we believe. Yeah, Kevin, great to talk to you and uh, congratulations and uh, good luck on September 20th. You've had a good campaign so far. You've met an awful lot of people and, and uh, we'll see how things work out on September 20th, okay? All right, thanks a lot, Eddie. I appreciate the time. Thanks, Kevin. I'm Eddie Matthews for the Stratford and District Chamber of Commerce.